Greetings, everybody, joining us today for this fireside chat. We will dive right in for interest of time. So there are multiple aspects of talent transformation, as we have learned in these sessions earlier, right? For our chat today, we are going to focus only on one of them, which is globalization. So we are seeing many countries are starting to look inwards for talent Elish. Mm -hmm. What impact do you think it will have on globalization? Yeah, so, you know, um, you know, I've been thinking about this uh, talent for a long time. It's a passion for me. Um, and uh, over the years, you know, companies, uh, pe people used to go where the jobs were. You know, everybody came to Silicon Valley and I'm from Silicon Valley and people came flocking in here because of the job, the good jobs are here. After a while, um, you know, people's companies started going to where the talent was. So, you know, we, we started globalizing. And over the last few months, we've seen that now the jobs are going to where the people li live. So it's like continuously changing to where talent is so much of a, at a, at a shortage that eventually people will go. It's like, you know, it's fighting gravity. You cannot fight gravity or water finds its way somehow, you know, where it wants to go. So the good talent is where companies need to be. And so globalize, this is a short term thing, which, you know, right now it's going on, but I don't think there's going to be any impact on globalization per se. In fact, I'll give an example. Um, you know, this is a long time ago, Steve Jobs, you know, one of the, his quotes, like is great. And this is Steve Jobs, you know, we, 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 we associate Steve Jobs with, you know, innovation, design, you know, coming up with great products. Yeah, yeah. But he actually said the secret of my success is that we have, gone to exceptional lengths to hire the best people in the world. So if, and if you think an Apple is a successful company and the way they have been successful is, is trying to hire the best people, uh, then you have to, as a company to be successful, be where the talent is. So, so I believe the globalization continues and we'll talk about it more as we go along. So. Oh, I completely agree. So uh, uh, as as we move forward, right, so remote working is something that got expedited. We talked about that a lot in earlier sessions as well, and we're going to talk about a little bit more. Um, in the post-COVID era, what do you think the leaders can do differently to drive business value? Yeah, I mean, I think the, and I, I don't think leaders have to change anything. I think leaders should continue to, and again, this is another one of my, um, uh, and a person I respect, I worked with him at Intuit, and uh, one of the things he used to tell us that uh, a leader's job is not to be, you know, the job is not to be the best they can be. Obviously, they always want to be the best they can, but is to build the capabilities in others. Uh, once you create, build the capability in others, and then create an environment where they can flourish and uh, empower them, then that's what you want to do. And I don't think that changes. In fact, it's even more important now that you do that because people are going to be not be able to meet very frequently. So empowering people, encouraging them, creating an excitement for the vision of the company is where you want to be. And that continues to be even more important now. So I would say encourage, energize, and empower your people and continue to do that even more. So. Those are those are important, and uh, some of the uh, earlier session uh, panel members also talked about that. There are some risks in globalization as well, right? So those are like unknown ecosystems, local regulations, geopolitical issues, and so on. Nilesh, in your opinion, how do you think global companies navigate through these? Yeah, I mean, I you know. What they should be thinking about? Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a great question, and uh, we have we have we have worked with a lot of companies. We're currently working with several companies where we're helping them thinking through their global strategy. Uh, we are actually actively working with setting up about nine different companies where we are setting up global centers for them. Um, obviously, risk is a is an important thing which you, as a, any business, should be thinking about. Um, but also, you obviously have to bend, you know weigh it against the rewards which you are getting. And when you look at the risk reward. Um, we actually are releasing a report very soon where we have weighed the, the ease of doing business, the risk of doing business in global locations. And uh, if you are on, the, on Thursday, we're going to release that the report. And you'll see that different countries have different advantages at risk. You weigh those risks against what your company needs are and you figure out what to do. There are certain things you can take to reduce those risks. Uh, obviously, making sure that you have the right leadership in place, right? making sure the geopolitical situations are not going to become something which will be affecting you. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure you work with partners who are able to help navigate through those risks. For example, 
you know, we used to work with companies where they would be able to travel. Um, and, you know, now they can't travel. So they expect a strong partner on the ground who's able to help them to navigate through situ situations. For the last four or five months, we have worked with companies who have hired 200 people uh, over online, you know, remotely. And that has gone pretty well for the companies. In fact, it has become nice, as some of our earlier panelists spoke about. Now the talent pool is not Bangalore or Pune or Mumbai or Delhi. or The talent pool is all of India. And as Pari mentioned in his talk, uh, you could have 100 different centers across the country where you can get talent from. So actually, I believe there are ways to reduce that risk too from a concentrated approach. Now you can get talent at multiple countries. You can get talent from multiple locations. So it actually, there's a ways to even reduce your talent because the remote working capabilities of which we have learned over the last few months can be used to reduce that risk. So. That, that's an interesting point, Alex that you bring up in terms of uh, the talent and uh, as, as you alluded to party and a couple of the other members have talked about earlier um, uh, one of the things that i feel that when you're bringing in those talent the onboarding becomes difficult because those are like brand new uh, people coming in and then how do you kind of uh, put the culture intact of the company or or get that imparted into them like what are some of the things that in your opinion that, that should be done to make sure that they are seamlessly onboarded into the into the firm and kind of the culture doesn't get ahead because they're all remote. Yeah, I mean, I think that is, uh, again, uh, nothing changes. I mean, you constantly, uh, you know, it's something as soon as you have a good onboarding program where you talk about the vision and mission, why you're there, what, is the per what are the problems you're solving for, what is the purpose for the company? Um, one of the other things which we do, uh, I've done always done in my career and we encourage our our customers too is making sure that the, in, everybody in the company understands the customer deeply, has a good customer empathy. Uh, because at the end of the day, the people building the products have to understand the customer. Uh, that's what will lead to great products, great experience for our customers. So, uh, and we have put in a number of programs uh, where our, every company I work for at Intuit is famous for customer driven innovation where we used to follow me home, where we used to go to the customer's homes or you know, spend a whole day at their, at their work to understand what are the kind of problems, how are they dealing with it, what are the, how are they using the products. Uh, customer mm -hmm. doing innovation was something core to us. At, at Kayak, where I was uh, there, um, we used to have, we didn't have any tech support there at all. Uh, engineers used to do all the tech support. So when a customer calls uh, an engineer or sends us an email, one of the engineers would get that email and they have to answer that question. So there was no tech support. And so that directly led to customer empathy. I'll give you an interesting mm -hmm. example. Uh, you know, Kayak is an online travel and a customer. And one of the features we had was um, I want to, uh, you know, to book a hotel next to a kind of a destination somewhere. So this person wanted to book a hotel next to Paris airport. We had a bug in our software, sure, sure. which and uh, where we ended up selecting a hotel which was 50 miles away from the airport. Now imagine you land there, suddenly you find your, your, you had expected the right. hotel to be next to the airport. Suddenly you see uh, you don't have a hotel next to the airport, it's 50 miles away. The customer sent us this email and the person who had developed that feature read that and immediately fixed that because he realized the, the, the pain he had caused to that customer. So, so the mm -hmm. comes from awareness, the company, the mission, the vision, and also the customer and the problems we're trying to solve. And uh, and I would say that's what, if you maintain that, I think you'd be all right, so. Um, so the companies, uh, like, why, why, why do you think the companies are compelled to globalize? Like, what is driving globalization? Just to give you, I think, I don't know if you saw uh, Vijay's uh, presentation a few, you know, a, a few sessions ago. And he was talking about by 2025, there's going to be a shortage of about 27 million people in digital talent shortage, right, globally. Um, actually, there's more data where by 2030, if you look at the total talent landscape, 80, there's going to be a shortage of 85 million people talent, which is which will be in turn mean about $8.5 trillion of lost revenue. Um, so that's one thing. Um, so that there's going to be talent shortage is actually going to get even worse. There are two reasons for it. The demand for digital talent is going up because of digital disruption going on, mm -hmm. uh, transformation going on. 
and also the population is going to reduce of the world. The world population is going to peak at around 9 billion people. And mm -hmm. so that will put more strain. So there's going to be less supply, more demand. Obviously, that leads to talent shortage. So that's one. Also, the markets are global now, right? A company doesn't necessarily yeah. sell within their own country anymore. You have to be a global customer. So you want the talent to be where the customers are. So that's other reason you want to globalize. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. where the good talent is, where the markets are. And we actually, this is a plug, we're doing a, a obsession on Asia a couple mm -hmm. of days from now, uh, where we talk about how, you know, uh, talent markets innovation is constantly moving from west to east and so globalization is if you want to be part of the growth story of the world globalization is a must so. cool uh, I completely agree and uh, uh, i think in interest of time i would just ask one more question uh, uh, like the top three things that you, you 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 feel that the companies have to bear in mind that when they're globalizing and yeah. kind of quick why yeah this is one of the things so we when we so we have we've been helping customers with global strategy global talent strategy for the last 20 years right that you know uh in mm -hmm. fact i used to be a customer of you know uh, uh and now i'm you know part of the company uh, the leadership here to help companies think about globalization um and when we were talking to customers we realized that they were worried about the risk of globalization they didn't have the bandwidth to do. They had the unknowns of the, how to set it up. So we came up with this a program called GCOE Accelerator, where we work with the customers right all the way from design to setting up to running the centers, and so have the the leaders, the engineering team, where you which focus on building products and building the technology, which is important to the company, innovating and coming up with new products, basically serving the customer, and mm -hmm. take care of the rest. And we found that you know that companies are really liking that approach because it allows them to focus on what's important to the customer it reduces mm -hmm. their risk and it accelerates the productivity and maturity of the teams because we bring in all the best practices along from right. various uh, learnings we've had over the years uh, so that has been one of the customer innovation driven innovation which we brought in at Zeno which is helping companies accelerate their journey to globalization at the reduced risk and higher output business outcomes. So. It's awesome. Um, I, I think we are at time, so apologies for the audience members. We are not able to take your questions, but we'll definitely uh, take it back up and then uh, kind of answer those questions as we uh, move forward. So I really appreciate your time, Lish. Uh, thanks so much. And also to our all amazing audience who have been sticking through uh, the two days and then a uh, few more days to go. So uh, looking forward to the other sessions. Thanks so Thank much you. again. Thanks, Risha.